Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us for our first ever live Q&A with the India Project team. For the next hour or so to coincide with our Christmas campaign, we wanted you to meet some of the team on the ground who are delivering this amazing work and impacting so many children's lives thanks to your support. We have a live link with our Railway Children India team in Delhi, so fingers crossed the connection will be okay. The team will give you an overview of the challenges they've been facing over the last few years and how our work has evolved since COVID. Thank you to everybody who sent through the questions in advance. We'll try to get through as many of them as possible, but please feel free to add them to the Q&A box during the session and we'll aim to feed these through to the team. And there's also the chat box open as well if you want to add any of your comments throughout the session. And if we run out of time today, we'll follow them up with the team and send through the answers along with the recording of the event after, after um, sometime next week. Right, first of all, I'm going to show you a short film to give you an overview of the work in the India slum communities. And then I'll hand over to the team in Delhi to give you more detailed insight into their work on the ground and how your support is really changing children's lives. Immediately after the pandemic uh, hit India and the subsequent lockdown, billions of people lost their jobs. Uh, several families uh, were pushed to desperation where uh, they lost all their money, uh, they couldn't access food uh, and they couldn't pay their uh, uh, rent. Uh, we knew right from the beginning that uh, many families of the children whom we have reunified in the past uh, were affected by the situation. So we started to reach out to thousands of such uh, families and uh, support them with uh, emergency food parcels. Uh, we also extended our work to uh, slum uh, communities around the railway stations to protect children within the community. Uh, by such work, uh, we strongly believe that we'll be able to uh, make sure children stay uh, with their families and they don't uh, get separated again. Many children in the community are not engaged in a formal education. 
So often their parents are daily wages worker, so their income were very low in terms of uh, they are earning very low uh, because of the lifestyle they are uh, or the education they have. According to their education, they are uh, uh, like income they are very low. So uh, um, where they are unable to afford a proper education, even an adequate nutrition for their children. And one of the most pressing reasons for the high population is the slums area. So there the family are migrates from different state in the hope of your better livelihood opportunity uh, in a different state. So uh, higher income is like a struggle to make a basic needs and ends the needs. So nutrition, education, health services, and social security uh, schemes from the government are not always available either due to a poor awareness and limited accessibility. So in the community that people are living, it's like a, it's not easy for them to always getting easily every services from the government because there's a lots of things in the community which they need to get uh, with the ID proof. It's like a Aadhaar card in India. So it, they should have the Aadhaar card to get any of it, any services from the government because it's like a must thing which have to uh, have it in India. So it's like uh, the ID card is called Aadhaar card. So they sometimes the people don't know, don't have the Aadhaar card. Due to that, they are limited to, to that service to get away from the government. So uh, the dire scenario means the children are constantly uh, at the risk of running away from the home because of they are not engaging for the little activities and they are not a uh, supervision of any adult at the home family because the both parents are in working. Uh, so they don't have a uh, supervision for the childhood to secure their childhood. So people, children are, are in, this, uh, like in a some condition where children are uh, start running away from home despite like a lots of reasons the children are having because they don't have a supervision. They don't have a, uh, something to done in the home. They don't have an engagement of any kind of activities. So there are lots of gaps uh, which children are facing in the community at their home. So it's like a, in a community basically they are feeling so because there is a, uh, the population is higher, the low income is a major reason for that. So uh, at the one of the slums wedding, that is a very thriving administration we are working. So where we are work still there is a need of emerging. Approx 200 children, this 200 children are need to support in education. So it's like, a, uh, it's like we are just uh, come up with the registration we are working and we found that the 200 children are not in education, not connected with the education. So for them it's like a risk level that then there's no engagement for them to uh, continue their education because of due certain reasons in the families. So 233 children we found in to link with the ICDS program. So, so ICDS is like a uh, government uh, program which the, provides the children uh, in age of 0 to 5 to provide uh, the supplementary nutrition and uh, uh, like a preschool is like a um, NFE uh, kind of NFE classes to the children. So it's like a to link them to the children. So, 233 children we need to link in the ICDS program and we have 100, 1429 adults we need to link with the different social security schemes. So as I have mentioned uh, there there's lots of uh, families don't have a Aadhaar card due to that they do not avail any other services from the government. It's a different services they, they didn't, didn't get it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Sandhya. So, as you know, the one community data uh, saying that uh, because the children are not engaged properly in the home or in the community, they don't have the activities and educations to do uh, to you know link with their childhood. So they run away and uh, uh, they stuck uh, somewhere which is you know risk for their life. And this is why Railway Children has decided to work. Uh, in 25 communities going ahead to address this issue in its strategic period from 2022 to 27. So with this, we are moving to our next question, uh, which is how we are reaching and engaging with the children in slum communities. So for this, 
I request Sandhya again uh, to respond this question. Uh, so thank you again uh, for responding to uh, this question. So we begin uh, reaching out to children from the community and family during the pandemic. So when the, the pandemic initially started and uh, hit the, uh, the whole entire world uh, in a situation where everyone is in trouble to uh, access the any facility. So it, it, uh, it's a give us like an opportunity to work in the like in those community where the children are living in, in, in like a situation where they help us. They, they might uh, need help. So the Indian children have started the work in the community to support uh, those children to provide such kind of initial services like of uh, like a grocery support, like a safety kit support, like a mask and sanitizer, those are the basic needs they require for that time, that particular time. So, uh, in the slum, the, uh, the community care store uh, knew a different way to reach and engage the children and community member to ensure uh, we, feel, uh, we were fulfilling the gaps and meeting their basic needs. So, we are uh, helping the children to enroll back to the school. So as we shared that we had a, uh, when we had started the work in the community, so we see that there's a lots of gap we have identified to support children. So when we started, we see that there's a, a need of grocery, there's a need of nutrition we have to come up with to support the children in the community. After knowing that there's a like a situation where we need more to give to the children who are just not going to school. They are not engaging in kind of activities. Then we are starting, uh, the regular children started again in the community to uh, to give a more support to those children who are not engaging in any, any kind of activity. And in short, uh, we are helping children to enroll back to, to the school and linking the children and families to the social security scheme, providing them a nutritious food and, uh, and grocery kits and safety kits. We are also running two community activity center in the two location of Delhi Sarai Roila. It's like a uh, activity center where children can come and have engaged for a certain period of time where the parents are not there to supervise. So after then knowing the, the reality and the problems and issue we have identified in the community during the period of pandemic, we have like lots of to learn from the community. Then we started the a community activity center in both uh, in both locations and now we are we can say that in both community activity center those children who are not attending any uh, kind of classes any kind of formal education now we are starting engaging those children in in a non formal education in different kind of activity to reading a newspaper to learn something new to understand what is the education importance so everything we are just trying to uh, learn make them our children understand the importance of education and also to engage them to uh, not in a risk if they don't have anything to do so they have a might be at a risk at a certain point of time they may get any in trouble so during the pandemic railway uh, children in india supported 1705 household across slums so we have started uh, the work with the six uh, slums nearby the railway station and we identify 1,705 households and around the railway station. The team uh, risked their own lives and went door to door uh, to deliver the safety kits to ensure the children and family and had across to mask and sanitizer. So this is I shared that uh, during the pandemic, there was like a limited accessibility for each and every one to, uh, to room around uh, in roads and to door to door service. So we have taken initiative, our team had um, um, give us a uh, motivation, the railway children give us some motivation to um, reach out to the children during the pandemic, during the situation where nobody can come up uh, ahead to support. We have uh, taken a step and we have supported children and families to give them a grocery where, when the, they are need the most. So it's like a thing they feel and they're happy to receive the grocery from by us to uh, support the children that time. And so it's like uh, 
uh, in 2020 and 21, we also supported the additional thousand families who were struggling for food with the three meals. So, so it's uh, it's uh, like family we are unified from uh, the last two years. We have assisted the all um, come up with the um, follow up and we get to know that these families we we need to support further to. Delivered to door to door service, we have delivered the grocery kits to their family and children to support them. And to 300, uh, uh, 350 children we have uh, found during the community intervention we have started after the COVID. We have seen that there's lots of children who are malnourished in the community. They don't have a proper nutrition to, to be uh, had in a, in a daily basis because they have. The parents have to have a proper income or a sufficient income to feed their child a proper education. So then it's like a, we have supported 350 children in the community to give them a supplementary nutrition for uh, up to 90 days to increase their weight and everything to, uh, to build their development. And we also reach out the, reach out the children from we did not, uh, we had a reunified in the past close to 700 children uh, who are in dire need to support. So like out of follow up, we got to know that 700 children from we have reunified um, in the past few years. So we have identified those 700 children and we just got to know that their needs in uh, during the pandemic and we have just provided the grocery support and the safety kit support to them. Thank you. Thank you, Sandhya. So, friends, as you know, a uh, few data has been plotted that 1,000 families, 700 children, 350 uh, children who need malnutrition, 700 children who need the four times, three times meals. So, these are the challenges and you know the work done in one community. So, you can imagine how many communities are there in Delhi and how many in India. So, so many communities need the uh, support and help. So moving on to our next question, which is what difference does your work have on children and families? So for this, I would request my colleague Sushi to please respond. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, our work at Breakfast Station has always ensured uh, the station we work at uh, child friendly, ensuring a 24 into 7 outreach and uh, child help desk at station to protect children uh, before they are exploited. Working in collaboration with the uh, Child Welfare Committee, uh, District Child Protection System, uh, are unified back with their families and are safe and thriving. Uh, during the uh, pandemic, we piloted our work and uh, addressed the need of the hour. Family had no income no saving and uh, no way to survive even a day. So we decided to uh, jump into uh, provide the emergency support to them uh, in terms of food, ration, uh, nutrition, safety kits, ensuring parents did not have to worry about how they would tie through the difficult days. Uh, what we learned during COVID about family support has uh, helped shape uh, how we need to support all the families of children uh, we contact moving forward. Uh, when the lockdown started easing up, uh, we did the families with the uh, social protection schemes where the uh, women got uh, opportunities for the employment. Uh, children who had uh, dropped out uh, of the school were uh, re-enrolled by us with our support and counseling to the parents instead of being sent off to the work. Uh, we did children and adults to the uh, vocational training programs uh, that allows them to start earning and support their family. Uh, the community centers for a safety net for the parents who uh, started going to work uh, and had no place to keep their children, it also ensured that children were actively engaged 
and not wasting their prime years, hugely, uh, which hugely reduces the chances of them taking to a life on the street. So that's my answer to the question. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sushi. So moving to our next question, which is how does how does this differ from your work at station? So which means that how how the community work is differ from the station work. So for this, I would request Shubham to please respond. Uh, thank you, Nitin. Uh, our work at station ensure children who are at risk and vulnerable are brought into ambit of the children protection system referred to a child welfare committee, a shelter home, or unified back to their families. Although ensuring the child doesn't take to a life on the street. Our work in the community takes a more preventive approach. Our work goal and work has been focused on the strengthening the family as a unit so that a child never feels the need to run away from home. Take to work early on in life or choose a path in life that could be determined to take for her. Here I would like to share Karan's story. Karan's father was an alcoholic. He would often beat his wife and son, creating a bitter and frustrating atmosphere at home. This made Karan, Karan's mother had to work extra hours to bring in an income. And Karan was demotivated from going to school and attempt running away. Days and weeks of counseling and consistent support from our team ensure that current fathers would help to deal with our team uh, addiction. Karan was slowly convinced to go back to the school and his mother was able to deal with the emotion. Our work in the community is slow and long term, ensuring family are strong and safe places for children. Parents are able to provide the support their family needs and children are thriving and growing instead of taking to a life on a street. We are actively increase the amount of support we can provide for all children. We return to their families, learning from the community we have started okay. Thank you. Thank you, Shubham. <coughs> so moving to our next question, how do you reintegrate the children you find back with their family? For this, I would invite my friend Deepak to respond this. Thank you, sir. <coughs> uh, children who are protected uh, are given information, given immediate support and uh, service like food, comfort, comfort and psychosocial First aid in uh, child help desk. Family facing understanding and analyze the circumstance of children arriving at the station and the risk assessment complete before the children are produced before CWC. Child Welfare Committee. As per law, the family is con contract and informed about the child. How the child uh, and, uh, about the child support and provide that to them. Yeah. Yeah. From the CWC, the children are benefit with the families. Our work just by our work does not end just sending the child home. We keep we keep in touch with the child tough constant uh, face to face follow and phone calls. We make sure that the child has not run away after going to home. Checking if they are studying, they are not studying. The uh, if if they are motivated, they are not motivated. 
we build a relationship with the family that ensure mutual trust so so that the well begin start of the child primarily at given points thank you thank you deepak so as deepak stated you know after protecting the child from the rape decisions we reunified the child in the families and our work has not stopped over there we build relationship with the families counsel the parents try to uh, re enroll the child to the education the education system provide them a support employment support link the family to the social protection schemes so that uh so that families can get the benefit of the government schemes and can uh, protect and you know uh, earn a bread butter for the children so to protect the children in a family is very important so that you know they are they will not run away in future so this coming to our next question to this that how do indian government and railway support our work because we are very closely working with the railways and uh, you know influencing the government policies with our work so i would like to give the answer of this like uh, stated that uh, india has one of the largest uh, population in the world and is heavily burdened by the poverty almost 30% of the world's poor children live in india india fares poorly in many human developments indices indices for gender nutrition child labor child marriages and street children few of the names the government law on mandatory corporate res social responsibility has mandated corporates accountable towards charitable organizations which has brought in an influx of income however not always towards the children our relationship with the indian railways has ensured standing operating procedure and guidelines for the safety and protection of children across railway stations in india however implementation is still lacks that is where we come in the concept of child friendly stations has been modeled and implemented by our help but scale is still to achieve here is where foreign aid and support of individuals play a significant role with this support we are able to build and sustain child friendly stations in locations where the government is unable to implement ensuring children are safe so this is how we are collaborating with the government and railways and with the support of our with the support of many individuals and corporates creating a safety net net nets across the railway stations to protect the children moving to our next point next question is is the situation for children in india getting better or worse for this i would request you want to please address this is a question we ask ourselves every day it is what drives us each morning and through each project the covid-19 pandemic a lot more damage to progress made on the rights of the children in india as it did world over <clears throat> the investment in the child protection challenges be it through government budget allocation csr fund institutional donation etc reduce considerably as it got diverted to covid relief many families were out of work children were out of school trafficking child marriage and child labor were rare and the situation was grim but through a consistent effort expansion of core work from railway station to communities to the families tending to emergency support and back to railway station one ensure that we have thousands of children from falling through the crack and staying within the safety net our support to family and communities during the pandemic helped prevent children from taking to a life on the streets or being forced by their family to 
to become founding members of the family, the right support was provided at the right time. Thank you, Shivan. So, moving to our next question. What is the biggest impact you feel railway children has made to date? So, for this, I would request Sandhya to please respond. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I would love to respond this question uh, because uh, the railway children, uh, our uh, work at railway station uh, is unique. Uh, to say at least, uh, we have a, like a only organization, the railway children. Who just who is working since more than 25 years for children alone, alone and the risk at railway station. So, why I am saying this? Because there are lots of railway stations in India. It's a huge network of railway station, huge network of railways who just having a busy business. It's like lots of passengers going and using the railway network from one place to another place. And it's like the cheapest. We can say the cheapest uh, mode of transport in India. So people and children are used, used to take the transport to uh, roaming around at the uh, take the transport to uh, to get down from a different station and lots lots of children are doing the travel. They separated. They lost their way. They are separated from families and they used to take to get run away from home because this is the cheapest way. To get the children to, um, uh, they can use for using the travel for the Indian, Indian railway. So we have we have decided to work with the railways to ensure that every child has to protect to just come at the railway station because it's a very important thing to work for those children who are just coming and can be uh, put into a risk at any point of time if, if the child is uh, traveling alone. Or with someone, some trafficker used to uh, uh, traffic the children for work for child labor through the train because no one is. It's like busyness for the busyness. We can say the children are no one is uh, paying attention for those children who are alone. And for that, India has a huge ratio of missing children. We have a data for missing children in India. Because lots of children are uh, uh, missing in our days. So, India has a over uh, 8,000 railway stations across the country. And the business and business of sheer scale of railway station pose a looming and threat to a children who are either abandoned, lost, and alone at this station. So, building an efficient and effective child friendly station model. Advocating with the government to ensure SOP guidelines to support uh, of a child protection ambassador of a railway station and having protected more than uh, one like twenty thousand children from taking to a life on a street has been the biggest accomplishment. So why I am saying this because this is the reason we are protect as a railway children we are protecting children we can say. That we have protected this many of children and we have saved the life of those children to put in arrest because any time the children may be get abused by any abuser the child risk uh, maybe the child can get in risk uh, if we cannot protect the child in the railway station we found the way we adopt our model during the pandemic to serve countless family and children enter communities we we hadn't worked in before. So, in another noteworthy accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandhya. So, this brings to three, three most important facts. Number one is Railway Children is the organization which is working more than 25 years in India and so far saved more than 1,20,000 children. But we are working on few stations and there are more than 8,000 railway stations, small and big, in overall India. And our study says that every five minutes, a child landing on railway station and disappear. So just think about it. What a large number of children are missing every day where the work of protection is not happening. So we are trying to expand ourselves with the support of you, with the support of government, with the support of CSR, with the support of corporates, 
so that as many as children's lives can be saved. So moving to our next question, what is the highlight of your job and why do you do what you do? To respond to this, I would request Shobham. I was fortunate to have a childhood that was safe and single. I have loving parents who sacrificed a lot to ensure I was educated and take care of. But there are millions of children out there who do not live in a safe environment. Not because of their family love them any less, but because of their unfortunate circumstances. For me, my work is more than on their job. It is an opportunity and responsibility to impact a life, not just one, but many. It's heartbreaking to see children suffer the way they do, but knowing that I have the ability to help them and guide them towards a better life in a blessing. My job comes with challenges, but it always comes with a chance to work with like-minded and dedicated people who consistently work to protect children. The highlight of my job is knowing that a child will not sleep on the street today, but will sleep, eat, and study within the safety of his home. Okay. Thank you, Shiva. And now we are moving to my favorite question, which is, what is the one thing that we can do to make a difference? And I would like to respond that the role you can play, we can play, is greater than what we can imagine. Any small amount you donate can have a huge impact on the life of a child. Reaching out to your families, friends, and circle of influence to donate, even though one pound can be monumental. Talking about the work of railway children, getting them to the field connected with the cause and really explaining to the people where their money is really going and going and can help bring attention to the children's rights, which is the need of the art. In short, you can help by donating, starting your own campaign and spreading the word as an ambassador for their mission. So the time reaches the final question of the list, uh, which is what do you hope for the future? For this, I would request Shubham again to respond, please. Uh, our hope for the future is very much linked to our vision and mission, which is to create a world where no child ever has to live on the street. For us, future is that we are be standing, catalyze and empower the railway network in the way that railway station become the safest place for children. We hope that we can reach every child who needs us and that we prevent children from every feeling the need to take a life on the street. We hope that we build a larger community of supporters like you so that we never have to worry about supporting children in the best way possible. And lastly, we hope for the future where there is no need for organization like ours, which will mean that children everywhere, every day are safe and protected. Thank you. Thank you, Shubham. And thank you everyone for your patience and questions. So I am handing over the floor to the team, to the, to the member at UK. Helen, over to you, please. Great. Thank you so much to the team in India. It's been really inspiring to hear about the work that you do and the impact that you're making on children's lives. Now we've got a few minutes left and we've had a few questions um, from our supporters. I'm just wondering whether you've got a chance to answer this one, um, team. The question is, how easy or hard is it for you to gain 
trust of people living in these communities. Oh, sorry, the next bit uh, to add was, I imagine they must have been let down by other people in the past. So the question is, so anyone can answer. The question is, how difficult it is to gain the trust from the community? Where we are so like, I don't yeah. know uh, the answer. So in the community, there are lots of uh, people who just migrate from different states. So like, it's like they are, they used to travel to, uh, uh, to like a, get a better opportunity uh, to stay there, to, you know, provide a, education for the children who to have a more income to, to like to sustain a life or, or to get a better life to uh, work with those families or children it, uh, sometimes it might be a difficult thing for us to uh, you know to, uh, to to talk to the families or to uh, link the families because they don't have a documents to uh, we can link them to, into the government scheme so we have like uh, having getting more trouble when the family is uh, working and children are staying back to home alone and they do not have to do anything for their home so we have to convince many time to the families to get to know their children in the school as the adult is not educated properly they don't have a proper education so they might be ha having a mindset to not educate the children too. So to uh, change the perception of family or adult that education is important to in India or to anywhere to survive. So we have just keep touching the family or to adult to ensure that we can um, teach our children for, to get a better life for, for, you know, for the children we have. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much.